Hi, I'm Ben Shelley, and in this tutorial, we will focus on creating a simple piece of geometry using tools that will eventually allow you to create things that are far more advanced. You should already have an understanding of the Maya interface and controls before proceeding with this video. If not, check out my introduction to Maya's interface and controls tutorial. We will be using tools from the 24 button shelf that I've advised how to create in the controls and shortcut document lift, listed below this video. Um, and it would be a good idea to make sure that that's set up before proceeding. So we're going to go ahead and create a Final Fantasy style sword. We've got a, a brand new document. Um, as I've explained in previous tutorials, you should already have this set up as a project. Uh, and you know, with auto saves and everything like that. If I do go through this quite quickly, feel free to pause the video um, just so I can save time. So we're gonna start off by creating a perfect cube in the middle of the grid. So to do this, we're gonna to go to create polygon primitives and make sure interactive select creation is unchecked and then create cube. Um, again, we press five on the keyboard to ensure that we're viewing a shaded uh, view leave it right in the middle of the grid so that the um, is intersected directly in the middle. This is just going to form the basis of the hilt. We won't be doing too much that we didn't learn in the previous tutorial, but it'll just be a good exercise and there will be a couple of new tools that we'll be learning as well. So what we want to do is add some divisions along here. We can line them up with the grid, but this is never exactly accurate. If you zoom in enough, you'll see that actually it's not that perfect at all. So I'm going to undo that um, so again you must you've got obviously got your your shelf up here so what we're going to do is because we haven't deleted the history yet we know that we can increase the divisions in our cube so if we go to you see they're going to be the width or depth I'm just going to add two divisions along here I'm then going to uh, go to face and I'm going to extrude, uh, so hold down right click, go to face and then click on the extrude button up there and I'm going to pull down just to about the next grid there, just so we have like a T shape here. And then I want this to be at a slight angle, so I'm going to right click edge, click on that edge, click on this edge by holding shift, so both are selected press R and resize them so that they're slightly further apart from each other. Um, it's actually slightly too fat, which is fine. I'm going to click on that face. Hold down shift, that face. R to resize and actually pull them together just so I'm quite happy with it like that. Okay. I'm now going to add two more divisions. Now, you will not be able to add any more divisions by um, uh, increasing this here. Once you have extruded things and added your own geometry to this, it will be very hard to edit. It's impossible. So you might as well delete history because whatever you do, it gets really crazy from there on in. So I have to do it by eye now, uh, which is fine. I'm just going to create a edge loop about there, an edge loop about there. Ideally, I would have um, created some additional edge loops earlier. Um, so it's exactly perfect. Want to then select this face, hold down shift, select that face and extrude these out to here. If I, I want to pull them together, but if I resize, I can do it like that. What I now want to do is have two more edge loops down. So I'm glad I've kept it in the middle here. So I'm gonna make sure that I've just got two more edges, slight equal, equally distanced apart from the center of the sword there. So now you can see we're getting quite a detailed shape. So you've got to be uh, quite careful not to make it too complex um, before it's absolutely necessary. So I'm holding down shift and I'm selecting these edges here. So you can see here I missed as I tried to select that edge and it's gone through and selected this one here. If I were you, I would double click on select and do camera based selection just to make sure you're only selecting the edges you want. So I've got these selected here. If I press R, I can resize them so that the sword sort of bows in like that. And as well, I can select that face and that face, press W and pull them 
out slightly as well. So we've just got a bit of shape uh, going on there. The next, I want to select this edge, that one, that one, and that one, and just press R and pull them in just a bit as well. Okay. Um, what we'll do now is press spacebar and go to the side view. Obviously, it should be the base or something. We go to side view here. We're going to go to create a cylinder. And then I'm going to zoom right in just to try and get it exactly in the middle of the grid there and pull out this shape. At the moment, the shape is still 2D, so spacebar out and then spacebar in. And in here somewhere is a cylinder. I'm going to press 4 on the keyboard so I can see where it is. I'm going to pull it down there. Um, obviously, it's being created exactly along that line there. I'm going to press 5 to come out of that view. I can resize it as much as I like. Um, it's still a bit fat for me, for me so I'm just going to scale it down a bit there. Uh, we'll do some more changes to that in a bit. We're just doing the very basic shapes at the moment. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to uh, add some detail to the edges of this sword. So I'm selecting those three faces, hold down shift, select those three faces, pull them out um, to about there. And I'm going to push them in now. So I'm just going to pull them in like that. So the edge goes in like that. The next thing I want to do is try and have this part of the hilt raised from, so this part of the hilt raised from there. So all I have to do is select one face and then double click on the face next to it and you have a ring selected like this. Um, and I'm going to extrude it out like that. I'm going to pull the edges in like that as well. And we will look at um, doing sorting out the edges and stuff later. Next, I want to extrude a uh, sort of like a base for where the hilt's going to come out from. So I'm going to select all these faces there. Because I have um, camera base selection on, I can drag a box and select exactly what I want without selecting anything behind. I'm going to extrude this up to there. And I'm going to select that face and that face, press R and pull them out slightly like that. <clears throat> okay. And then what we're going to do is create a simple blade. So I'm just going to create interactive creation here. I was going to go from about that line there to about that line there and then just pull it up slightly. Press W, I'm going to move it down just so again, there, I, can, I want to make sure it's just in the middle there, so I know it's in the middle of the sword. I'm going to select this face, this face, that face, and press W and move the sword up uh, just to about there. So I zoom in, select that one and that one. I'm just going to make it ever so slightly less wide. Okay. Now I see the sword blade, I actually want to make that a bit more heavy duty, so I'm going to pull that down there. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the vertexes. I could either select the vertexes and have this sort of shape here. What we'll do next is create a edge loop along there, and another one about there. So I have to click on the edge loop tool and then click ex exactly on the edge of the lines there. And then I'm going to go around to this edge here, go to face, pan around, go to face, press R and resize. And I'm pinching them in. Now, just as, as I just said, the, the even though this is a super sharp sword, it's really important that you never really create any geometry that has a perfectly sharp edge as this appears here. Um, as there will always be light that needs to be caught on it. Um, we will end up beveling that later, but um, this is probably all the beveling that we'll do for the sword. So I'm just going to shrink it down, even so it's really thin, 
in your renders, if you were to render this, you would be able to see a bit of light being caught on the edge of your sword um, over there. Now, I want to make this slightly more creative, so I'm going to create an edge loop along here. It's trying to conform to this edge, so I'm going to press R and shrink it in so it's about there. Press W, I'm going to move it up to there. I'm going to do uh, another one directly next to it. And with this will allow me then to go in and I shouldn't have made this face quite so small yet, but there is a face in there if you zoom in loads. I'm going to press R. I'm going to resize that up so that this top part has some thickness to it. Just slightly thinner than the main body of the blade um, there as well. I want, actually, I'm going to give this blade a bit more thickness. I'm going to go through and select these edges, press R, and resize that up to there, and select this bit, and make that a bit bigger as well. So uh, we have this shape going on here. And what I'm going to do is move that vertex just to there to give us a, a slightly nicer edge, which we'll do for now. OK. And the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to add some more detail to the hilt down here now. So I'm just going to go to these faces and pull them in slightly just so that we're looking from the side. Uh, it just look, looks a little bit nicer. And I'm going to have some spiky, crazy spiky bits on the side here. So I'm going to go and create a new polygon here. I'm going to drag it so it's about two squares like that. Pull it up. I'm going to move the sword, move it into the sword to about there. I'm going to go to face, extrude. I'm going to resize this. I'm going to move it this way. I'm going to press G to repeat the extrude command and just pull it in like that. And then give it a really sharp edge there. And edge, get that edge and push that up there. So I'm quite happy with that. I now want to duplicate this uh, spiky thing. I'll make it a bit fatter. Uh, duplicate that spiky bit to the other side of the sword. Let's make that a bit thinner. So I'm going to control D, control D for delta. Oops, I press four. I'm going to resize it. Now, if you flip across that way, it will flip for you. Um, you need to make sure you do it perfectly. So I'm going to go over to my attribute editor, go to polycube four, and I can see it's obviously minus four there, which is ridiculous. I just want it to be minus one. Press enter, uh, and then I'm going to move it. Now, because I have made this slightly thicker than it was when it was created. This is already at 1.4 here. Um, you can see when I typed in minus one, it wasn't the same size. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to freeze transformations. And this shows us now that its scale is, it's gone, is exactly one. So I'm going to duplicate that, press R. And now if I type in minus one, it will be the exact same size as the other one. I'm going to move it over there. Um, I want to just push these edges in uh, a bit there. So it looks like that. And let's play around with that face there and that face there. Press R and obviously it does it symmetrically uh, for you. And the next thing, uh, most of these Final Fantasy style swords will have some hollow bits in the middle and this is quite an important learning point here. So um, I'm going to create sort of like a cutout shape that goes from there to there, joins back up again and goes from there to there and it will be on this side of the sword and the top one. I'm going to have them at a nice angle like that. So now, if I, I need to make some holes in here. So if I sh shift select those two and, aha, 
So because I've got um, camera base selection on, I need to turn that off because when I moved these vertexes, it didn't do it underneath. So I'm gonna press undo many times and get back to there. I'm gonna press four just to make sure everything's lined up. You can press spacebar, jump into your top view, which is a much more professional way of doing it. I'm going to select those, press W and move them up to there. And then press six to make sure it's back again. I can do a press, uh, I'm gonna drag and select and delete those faces. Again, it's much safer to do this from the top view, just to make sure I don't accidentally delete one underneath. So I've gone through and now if you zoom out, it doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna make this, uh, make these slightly further apart. Okay. So I'm gonna select the edge ring and I'm going, whoops, double click, drag select on those ones and double click again. And then I can press W and we've absolutely got a slightly thicker bar in between. Now we're going to learn how to join up these edges, which is a really important thing to be able to know how to do. So we're going to go to the append to polygon tool. This is located in edit mesh, append to polygon tool. And then we're going to join up these faces. G, join them up, G, join them up. And so keep pressing G, which obviously repeats the command to uh, join edges together. So if you are if you're having trouble with this, you you click on the append to polygon tool, and you'll notice that edges that do not have a face assigned to one side of them get slightly thicker. You'll see that these edges are slightly thicker than these ones. That means you can click on one, then you can click on another one if you want. You can click on this one over here to maybe fix the mistake of deleting. A face and then press enter once you've uh, once you've completed that I'm gonna press control Z because I don't want to do that it's gonna press um, append to polygon tool again or press G because I know it's the last thing I've done click on that edge and then you get these purple things come up I'm gonna click on the edge at the bottom if you uh, are not happy with it you have to press enter and then control Z um, Sometimes you will miss, you'll click on an edge and then you click into space, um, which creates something horrible. So you have to you know, go back, control Z or delete that face. That's not what you want. So be very careful when you're appending to polygons that you click on one edge, click on another edge and join up. And we're going to just, so it's G, click, click, G click click and G and we've got two holes cut out of our swords there okay uh, next I want to add some maybe a little bit of grip to our cylinder here so I can go to poly cylinder one okay we're just gonna do some finishing touches to our sword model I want to add a bit of uh, grip or something here to the main sword so I'm going to go to um, object mode, I'm just, gonna, sorry, I'm just gonna go to face, and I'm just gonna select, um, actually, what I'm gonna do is click on that uh, poly cylinder there, go over to my attribute editor, and I know that because I haven't deleted the history yet, um, I'm, I can still change the number of divisions on here. So uh, I can have some along here, if you want to do your grip that way. I want to have, um, I'm gonna to add to actually about 40 like that, which means I can then come along and select a face. And then if I move one, two, three, uh, four, sorry, three faces away. So one, two, three, I can just go around one, two, three and select. So I'm holding down shift one, two, three. And I can select these faces uh, like that. Every fourth face, like so. Um, also, luckily, I typed in uh, a number that was right, so I just still uh, space in between. 
So, uh, and then I'm going to go to extrude, and I'll just go around to where the extrude um, command thing is here. So I'm I, I can then go over to that and pull it out. If I choose the wrong one, obviously it's going to look pretty crazy, um, which isn't what I want unless you're doing like a, a rotary blade or something. So I'm going to pull that out to just about there. And see if I like that. And that will do. That'll do fine. <clears throat> In fact, I'm going to undo it slightly. No, no, that's fine. I'll like that. Uh, uh, now, this would be quite uh, uncomfortable to hold. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select these faces again. Here. Once every face is selected, I'm now going to bevel them just so that because uh, the edges look so sharp, you know, it could cut your hand or something. So I'm going to go to bevel. So this is in edit, mesh, and then bevel, which is down there. Um, but we've got it in our shelf already. So once you click bevel, uh, you'll see that now it would look a slightly more comfortable to hold. So we'll leave it um, like that. If you want to change, the information about your bevel, go to your attribute editor and move along so you can see poly bevel one. And I'm going to change, decrease the offset slightly just so it's not quite as, uh, as soft. Um, and you can also change the number of segments. As you do this, the, de the model can get very detailed. So obviously if I add two, you know, it's add, you know added like another uh, 12 or 20 or something along there. So I'll just drag it back. Um, two is good for me. Uh, add a slight, slightly uh, more detail to here if we want. Uh, and go round. And extrude. Oops. And go around and extrude uh, from there. And if I'm lucky, I can just change. Uh, these just to pull it in slightly like that. So I'm just adding a bit more bulk to the sword now. Um, I'm going to go straight up here. I'm going to select this blade. You can see there's some soft edges going on. So I'm going to click on the blade, click on harden edge, and that will go away, um, which works out quite nicely for us. Uh, over here again, I want to bevel these. If I click on bevel on the entire object, um, it creates obviously double lines along everything, um, which isn't always what you want. In this case, it doesn't look too bad. So I'm just gonna click on this and press bevel. And this one, if I press bevel, we would have so much new information added that it wouldn't, that just wouldn't be needed. So uh, I'm gonna go along and select the main edges of the sword, and then I'm gonna bevel them. So. That's sort of the only harsh edge I can find. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go along and bevel that as well. The larger the object, the larger the bevel. So I'm gonna click on this, go to poly bevel. I think it's poly bevel four, we'll find out. If I change the offset, you can see that. I'm just gonna add the segments to two, um, just like that. So, um, and then I'm just gonna go to harden edge. Um, I want the edge in the middle of that to be soft so I can Double click on that, click on soften edge, and it goes um, back like that. And once you think you're nearly done, just do one last check over the geometry that you've made and just look out for anything that doesn't look quite right, that you're not quite happy with. Look for nasty edges. So we've obviously gone and forgotten, um, I've gone along and forgotten about these edges here that really do need beveling. The fastest way of selecting them is to just drag a box over them like that. Hold down shift, drag another box there, drag another box there. Um, if I press four, I can see that I'm selecting only what I want. So I'm selecting all that. Uh, I'm not too fussed about these corners in there. And now I'm going to go up to bevel and click 
on, so click off my saw, click on again, and go to um, offset and change that on down um, slightly there, or I can increase it depending on the look that I'm going for, but uh, I will probably decrease that, so it's just uh, it's just fairly small. Cube, that is appear directly in the middle of the sword, I can just go in and add uh, something nice and scary to the bottom of this sword here. Uh, I really haven't got much time, so I'm just going to bevel it really simple and um, make the poly bevel 5 slightly smaller. Make the cube slightly bigger. Um, where's that poly bevel? Drag that down, and I'm just going to use some of the existing geometry that I've got and cheat. So select those two, control D, move them down and I'm going to move them uh, closer together. Whoops. Just so they're touching that and then I will uh, group them. So shift click on that, control G and then I will um, resize them. So now you can see that the pivot has gone to the center of our grid which is not what we want. We want to center pivot back to the object and I'm going to resize it to about there and just drag that down so here you can see we've got quite a nice uh, quite a nice sword um, and that's pretty much all I want to do oh no what we need to do is go to is it, go create polygon prim primitives sphere uh, and I'm just going to leave it this um, I've no if you notice the sphere at the, if you if you have the triangled edge at the top it can kind of look bad sometimes so I'm just going to hold down J as we've set up our uh, 90 degree rotate integer there so um, in the last tutorial we would have set up a discrete rotate and typed in at 90 I'm going to press hold down J rotate it and it rotates exactly 90 degrees I'm going to press R again and resize that in um, just so it looks like we've got like a gemstone or something in there. Um, make it a bit bigger. I do want to add, I mean I can soften this like that. Click on soften edges and uh, it doesn't look too bad. But I can see it does look slightly polygonal. So I'm going to click on it and go to polysphere 1 and type in 20 and 20. And it will appear like that for us. Um, and again, um, feel free to duplicate stuff and decorate your sword. When you're doing stuff for computer games, I would highly recommend deleting any faces that are not seen. So if I resize that to there, and then I go zoom in on it, I'm going to press 4. I'm just going to go to face. Um, I could either line this up or I could go into my base view here and select these faces, press delete, and these little bad boys, and there you've got sort of any details on any of your geometry it's always best if you just delete what you can't see and it will um, remain a lot uh, cleaner for you so we're going to group those um, now it's centered to the pivot which centered to the center of the grid which is brilliant the pivot to the center of the grid so I'm going to do control D and R if I resize I can just resize straight through to there. Um, I can obviously type in minus one and that will go directly there, uh, which works out brilliantly for me. Uh, the next step obviously would be going along and texturing uh, this uh, object, which we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing in a later tutorial. So I'm just extruding this in there and pressing G and extruding again and press W. And then I'm going to go to uh, Harden Edge. I'm, I'm obsessed with these little gemstones. So I'm going to resize that down to there. So with the tools, there's one more tool that we need to look at as well. If we, so if, we, if we're happy with our sword, uh, what we'd have to do now is select the whole object. Uh, obviously, you can you can group it, uh, or you can 
uh, combine the objects. So say if you wanted to put this in a computer game as a weapon for an enemy, once you've textured everything and you're really happy with your object, you can go and combine. This is in Mesh, Combine, or it's that icon there. Um, now, when you select something, you cannot select anything individually. Uh, we know that that's a separate object, that sphere is a separate object. The only way to select the sphere on its own is to go to face mode, double click on any face, press W, and you'll be able to move what is now just that set of faces, which is part of this geometry. But uh, clicking on anything individually will just select the whole thing. If you click on D, sorry, if you click on uh, separate, click on this one here, you can restore everything back to its individual state. Um, but be careful when doing this because if you've got lots, if you've maybe combined these to that, and then you combine the whole object like this, when you uncombine, everything separated, even these. So if you've got a highly detailed model like a car or something, then you're going to have all these separate screws and springs that you probably wouldn't want to be uncombined on their own so uh, just be careful when doing that so i'm going to combine that up we have learned all the really basic modeling techniques here that you could use to create absolutely anything there is nothing that you can't create with this all the computer game environments that i've created is pretty much with these simple tools here so the next tutorial will be on texturing as well